do England need to upgrade their manager in order to finally win a major tournament? The World Cup is just five months away and debate continues to rage about England boss Gareth Southgate. Most fans acknowledge the progress made under Southgate's tenure as England manager, but many still question whether he can go that final step and give us a long awaited tournament victory. Before I address the main criticisms of Southgate, let's quickly walk through his time as England boss. Southgate famously kind of ended up as England manager. He actually said he didn't want the job after Roy Hodgson left in 2016. Sam Allardyce took it. That didn't last very long and Southgate was made interim manager before signing a four-year deal as permanent boss in November 2016. One of the key pro-Southgate arguments is the fact that England were absolutely rubbish when he took over and needed picking up. We'd seen the inability of Sven to get the golden generation all on the same page. Steve McLaren was the Wally with the Broly. Fabio Capello was an expensive failure. Roy Hodgson lost to Iceland. And Big Sam left after just one game and a scandal. Expectations being low may ultimately have worked in Gareth Southgate's favour, but having seen a slew of expensive big names from foreign shores or the current best English club manager chosen, I actually quite like the idea of having somebody who was already in the system get the gig. Southgate had been under 21 manager since 2013, three years prior to taking over the first team. At the 2018 World Cup, my mood was generally just don't be too crap and anything else is a bonus. I could still remember that Iceland game very, very fresh in my mind. England far, far exceeded my and everybody else's low expectations. Got all the way to the semi-finals, losing to Croatia. Southgate got a lot right without the players to control games possession-wise. England built defensively, had a solid team who were very good at set plays, won a penalty shootout and boasted the tournament's top scorer in Harry Kane. I do, of course, accept that that tournament opened up for England and defeating Panama, Tunisia, Colombia on penalties and Sweden to get to the semis wasn't the most difficult run. I don't, however, accept that England bottled the semi-final against Croatia. Rakitic, Brozovic and Modric were too good for Henderson, Ali and Lingard in central midfield. Go and look at the stats and an early goal doesn't really disguise that Croatia dominated that game, even though it went all the way to extra time. Overall, though, from 2016 to 2018 was a big trend up. Expectations were very much surpassed. Surely that 2018 World Cup performance by England and Southgate is worth hitting the like button to support the video and the channel. In Southgate's second major tournament at last year's COVID-delayed Euros, England went one stage further, losing in the final to Italy in a penalty shootout. Expectations? We're back up to normal England levels and there was no easy draw this time with England getting past 2018 nemesis Croatia, old enemy Scotland and the Czech Republic in the group stages before actually beating the Germans in the round of 16. Ukraine and Denmark in the quarters and semis was certainly kinder than Italy's route of Belgium and Spain, I will admit that. A lot of the failings in the final were eerily similar to 2018. England take the lead early on. This time, the trio of Jorginho, Barella and Verratti controlled the ball, controlled the possession and the game in that manner. But there's a big difference. This one went to penalties and it's not about possession and who's controlling midfield when you get down to a penalty shootout. And the fact that two players bought on very, very late, too late in the 120th minute, missed their penalty kicks was, with hindsight, a strategic error by Southgate. And so, with home advantage, lots of games at Wembley, a much stronger English presence in the first teams, key players in the top Premier League teams in 2021, despite being so close, it does feel 
like that was a missed opportunity. So let's draw some conclusions here and I'll start with some praise from an admittedly low base. I think Southgate has overseen the reorganisation of the England setup, re-engaged the fans and probably more importantly, got the players together. On pitch at tournament level, Southgate's record compares very favourably with other England managers. It seems to be second only actually to Sir Alf Ramsey. Yes, Euro 96 was great, but Venables wasn't wily enough to get past the Germans. Hoddle's 98 team, they were great to watch, but well, Beckham got sent off, didn't he? Um, you can probably make an argument for Sir Bobby Robson maybe being a lot more unlucky than Southgate has been to come up against Maradona in 86, Van Basten in 88. But God, 1990, what a chance that was to win the World Cup for England. What I will concede is just because Southgate hasn't grossly underachieved like pretty much everyone since Hoddle, that doesn't automatically mean he's done enough with the players and the opportunities that have arisen. The big area of criticism for all England managers, not just Southgate, is selection and philosophy. But look, I guess to quote Roy Keane, it's his job. In terms of selection for an international team or squad, the nature of the beast will always mean that fans will obsess over players not being used. And I don't particularly want to go down that route. What I will say is that Southgate has built a core of players he's used for the majority of his tenure. He went young in 2018, and that's meant he could stick with a lot of the same players. And he does seem to put his philosophy ahead of picking individual players, which, we have to be honest, many England managers were criticised for not doing in the past. We can't have it both ways. It is all very well as a football manager sticking to your philosophy, but is that philosophy right for the crop of players England have at the moment? And is it too conservative? And this is probably the area where I do have sympathy for the England fans who are complaining about the manager at the moment. And they probably reasonably argue that the players they see coached by Guardiola, Klopp and Tuchel at the very top end of Premier League and European football might be capable of a little bit more of an expansive attacking style of football. Could we have Walker, Stones, Foden, Sterling, Grealish, Trent, Henderson, Mount, James, etc. doing a little bit more of what they do with their clubs? Where I disagree slightly with some of the debate around Southgate is that I don't have any issue with a team playing three at the back. I firmly believe that a formation in and of itself is neither defensive or attacking. It is the philosophy of the players and the instructions they're given within that shape that defines how a team plays and what they look like. A three at the back with centre-halves not passing progressively, unadventurous wing-backs defensively instructed central midfielders is going to look quite dour and dysfunctional. And yes, England have at times looked that way. However, contrast that with the 3-4-3 of Brazil, for example, in 2002. And the complete opposite is true. Yes, I am making a comparison though. We have a team that was set up with Cafu and Roberto Carlos at wing backs and Rivaldo, Ronaldo and Ronaldinho up top. Maybe it's the players that win the games, not the managers or the formations. Where I will defend Southgate slightly on philosophy is this whole controlling a game through possession debate and this lament each tournament about losing to a team with Rui Costa, Ozil, Kadira, Modric, Verratti on the other side. Maybe Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips will become those players who can control games in central midfield. But it does feel that we either don't produce or develop those type of players. So I don't blame him for looking for other ways to try and win at tournaments. Look, Southgate's reign has surely caught England up in terms of analysis and preparation where we were lacking in decades past. And again, yes, I admit we're going from a low bar. Surely it's also taught us that success at club management doesn't seem to have too much correlation with international level and that the manager who does finally win something with England might have been on the inside for many, many years before 
lifting that trophy. Look, in conclusion, I think Southgate has been a good England manager thus far, but I do accept the premise that maybe somebody else with that ability to just open things up, either with their general philosophy or in-game, towards a more controlling through possession type situation at international football might be better suited with where this squad is going to be going over the next five or ten years. In life and indeed in football, it's not always the person who lays the groundwork that goes on to take the glory. Look at Bob Paisley and Bill Shankly at Liverpool. Bob Paisley won everything. He was dripping in trophies and medals, but everybody knows it was Bill Shankly that built the foundations for Bob Paisley to go ahead and do that. Maybe that'll be the case with Southgate and the torch will be passed after brilliant groundwork has been laid for someone else to go on the extra mile and win a major tournament. Maybe Southgate will do it himself and win the trophy in Qatar to finish his journey. And of course, everybody, it's England. There's always the chance that Southgate doesn't win in Qatar, passes the torch and the search for the trophy goes on and things actually get worse. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you're pro Southgate, let me know what does he need to do to go that extra mile and win that trophy. And if you think the reins need passing either before or after the Qatar World Cup, let me know who do you think would do a better job and why. As ever, let's um, have the watchword be respect in the comments. We're all entitled to our views, whether you disagree or agree with me or Gareth Southgate or anyone in the comments, let's keep it friendly and nice and make this the best place to debate football here on YouTube. In the meantime, if you want to see some happy days under Gareth Southgate as England manager, why not check out my slightly over-the-top reaction to England's win over Germany back in the Euros right here.